All right, people, welcome back to Conqueror and Commander. This is a uh, Commander game featuring the Political Puppets deck that uses Zedru the Great Hearted as its commander. Um, this deck was really tough to play with, so let's take a look at my opponents in this game. First up is Melek. Is it Paragon, who's usually... This is my first game against him, actually, but I expect him to be like Spellslinger or something like that. Just a lot of spells and possibly trying to do some sort of Storm shenanigans, I'm not sure. Uh, Sliver Queen, who can be Slivers or 5-color control. Uh, I'll give you a spoiler, this is a 5-color control deck. And then Azami, who is sometimes Wizard Tribal, uh, sometimes Combo, sometimes Instant Win with stuff like Labor uh, Laborator laboratory maniac who knows uh, so my opening hand has two lands uh, nin vision skeins skyscrabbing and howling mine really I'll be honest with you the only time this deck is ever competitive is if you get an early howling mine or font of mythos uh, other than that the mana is so bad in this deck it, it has only 34 land and it needs something like 40 uh, you're typically screwed. So just because I can play an early Howling Mind and I've got the Vision Skeins, uh, I it's it's an instant keep for me. Plus I can play most of this stuff as well. Uh, Sliver Queen goes first. I draw Wall of Denial. So if I manage to draw a Plains, I'll have some defense set up. Grand Abolisher for Sliver Queen. A zombie copies his Halmar Depths and plays Serum Visions as well. I get Brainstorm. Uh, Brainstorm is one of those cards in this deck that doesn't do very well unless you have a fetch land or something to shuffle your deck after you brainstorm. There's only a couple fetch lands in the deck and sh or shuffle effects, so it's not as good as it could be. Trinket Mage from Sliver Queen for Wayfarer's Bobble. It's interesting. Most of the time, um, Trinket Mage goes for Soul Ring. So obviously he's looking for a specific color in order to grab the bobble. Uh, Courier's Capsule from Azami. Uh, interesting little draw card and then Thespian Stage. At the end of Azami's turn I end up vision, vision skeinsing. I don't even know if that's the right way to say that, but that's what I did. Uh, and I'm able to go ahead. I don't want to play the Howling Mind just yet. I, I think honestly looking back I probably should have played it earlier. But I had a lot of stuff that I was able to play early, and I decided to like put Vow of Lightning on Grand Abolisher here so that he can start beating up on people. Um, fabricate for Otherworld Atlas, and then discarding a bunch of stuff. Like Demolish. Um, the Overlord does nothing besides attack. The Azami player, Azami gets Pristine Talisman and does nothing. I get Terramorphic Expanse, so I can actually brainstorm for value now. And I decide to play Howling Mine. Um, and I'm probably going to brainstorm at the end of Azami's turn. Obviously because I can't do anything during Slipper Queen's turn d due to the Grand Abolisher. Melek finally gets a Mountain and plays Otherworld Atlas. Um, I'll be honest, the Melek deck turns into almost Sylvan Scrying for Reliquary Tower from Sliver Queen, and uh, the Sliver Queen player attacks his army again. Uh, the Malik player, is, his deck is almost like a Niv-Mezzet deck, and that is a bunch of draw uh, effects and like Winds of Change type stuff, stuff. So I'm a little confused as to what the Malik player was trying to do. The Zami plays Land Equilibrium, which is... <laughs> I mean, it's great for controlling green decks and ramp decks, um, but it can definitely stall the board state, and uh, most people don't like the card. And I end up brainstorming and getting Rapacious One and uh, Dumbest of Fealty. I've got five lands now, so I can put the wall out to protect me, and I put Nin out. You know, the the I probably shouldn't have played Nin here, but my feeling was, like, in the next turn or two, I could play the Dominus and then steal something and then nin it to death. Uh, so that was my plan anyways. Preordained from Melek. Puts another counter on the Atlas and then Winds of Change. 
So uh, before the Winds of Change takes place, um, the Sliver Queen player played Red Elemental Blast to get rid of Land Equilibrium. And then the Melic player plays Temple Bell. So there's a lot of draw in the Melic player's deck. My new hand has Soul Ring, Crescendo of War, and Oblation. And then I draw Insurrection. Uh, Insurrection is by far the most powerful uh, card in this deck. Privileged position for Sliver Queen means that it's going to be tough to start targeting stuff. And then she hits the um, Melic player. A zombie gets a Soul Ring and then ponders. And doesn't do a whole lot else right now. She still hasn't popped her Courier's Capsule, probably because she doesn't feel like she needs to. Hopefully the replay here doesn't crap out. There we go. So I end up drawing Armillary Sphere again in the Plains. Play the Plains and the Soul Ring. Um, and Zedru. And then the Sphere. Uh, I feel like I can go ahead and give away the Howling Mind to somebody soon. But there's a decent amount of draw already out there. Microsynth Wellspring for Melek, and then Expedition Map. Sliver Queen ends up playing Sun Titan to get back a land, I believe. Yeah, this is a fetch land. So, and then he starts attacking the Melek player. So Zombie's at 34, and Melek's at 32. More counters get put on Otherworld Atlas, and then we all get to draw from Temple Bell. Azami plays Time Stretch. Uh, the good thing about this Time Stretch is that it's the old school's Time Stretch, not the new one. I like this one's art better. The bad thing is just the card itself. <laughs> Luckily, Melek has an answer in the form of Dissipate. So, time stretch is gone. I end up drawing Goblin Cadets, which are friggin' horrible. I play Seaborn Muse. And I attack the Azami player. Then I play Crescendo of War. Crescendo of War can speed games up real fast because it just needs a few um, turns around to really turn attackers um, brutal. So Melek tutors up Reliquary Tower and has everybody draw cards. Uh, the Melek player tries to play Parallel Thoughts, which can, you know, make it so that you can tutor up whatever you want. Uh, but the Sliver Queen player mana drains it. And uh, obviously Parallel Thoughts is there to set up whatever combo Melek has going. And then everybody draws cards from other Otherworld Atlas. Sliver Queen has a bunch of mana. There's Trigon Predator. And then he dresses. Um, stop, damn it. He dresses Melek, and Melek's hand was almost all land. I, I know it just ran by, but he made him discard Spell Twine. And uh, Melek didn't look too brutal. However, he, what he does is he does Identity Crisis um, Azami. And Azami's like hand included stuff like, let's see here, Archaeo Monster, Brain Geyser, there's the Laboratory Maniac that we were talking about. Mole Drifter, Red Replication, Serum Visions, Sphinx of Magosi. I like Sphinx of Magosi, actually. So, he's just going to get fetch lands from Sun Titan, and he's attacking uh, the Melek player. A zombie uh, ends up drawing from the Howling Mine, gets Mana Crypt and then plays Consecrated Sphinx. At this point, I'm I'm very concerned about the Azami player. 
and uh, especially with Consecrated Sphinx, she's going to get back in the game real quick. I do have Insurrection, and Crescendo of War does have four Strife counters on it. So I figure I'll just Insurrection, take out Azami, and then use the Trigon Predator to get rid of the Privileged Position for Sliver... There it is. Sliver Queen. I hate it when MTGO does this, but sometimes it stacks things on top of each other. Um... So yeah, I just want a zombie gone at this point. I need another mountain, so I sacrifice Armillary Sphere to get two mountains. And then I do have enough mana to play Insurrection. There is no counter spell though for that one. And like I said, I, s I send the Predator after the Sliver Queen and everybody else pretty much after. Well, I send one guy after Melek. I use the Sun Titan's ability to get Terramorphic Expanse back. The Azami player, oh, and I do blow up Privileged Position. Um, the Azami player was very upset that I killed him. Uh, he basically uh, said good luck winning against 5 color control and said that it, it was a dumb play. And, you know, I don't know what's, what's in Azami's hand or anything like that, but I do know that uh, based on the cards he was playing, he could have won out of nowhere. Uh, whereas Five Color Control at least takes a turn or two to set up a win most of the time. Um, so, I'm perfectly happy with my decision. As you can see, as I stay here, I'm fine with my play. Uh, Melek plays Flux, which is interesting. And everybody discards a bunch of junk. I like having all my lands. So I actually don't discard much. Uh, chain Reaction clears the board. Let's move this up so that people can see it. Move, please. Move, move. Okay, I'm wasting time here because I want to help you guys see stuff. There we go. Jeez. And the zombie's gone. Nobody sees needs to see that anymore. Alright. Elixir of Immortality from Melek. And then the Sliver Queen uh, cat, er, Miracles into Temporal Manipulation. Oh yeah, I sacrificed Terramorphic Expanse to get another uh, planes out there. Phyrexian Metamorph copies uh, Coalition Relic. And then Sliver Queen comes out. So, uh, Melek's at 12, I'm at 40, and the Sliver Queen player is at 27. Shendo gets another counter on it. It's got seven counters on it right now. Uh, so Eternal Witness for Identity Crisis, and he Identity Crisis is the Melek player. So Melek has like a whole mess of land. And just looking at what is there, there's an Earthquake, a Diluvian Primordial. Um... Compulsive Research, Parallel Thoughts, Reverberate, Thought Flare. I'm really not sure what the deck is supposed to do. Whatever. Uh, so, he attacks me. I get hit for 15. Uh, I'm down to 25. So I decided it's time for blockers. I play Fog Bank. Um, I do have and Guard Gamazoa. It's Jellyfish and Walls. And then Azorius Guild Mage. I do have Is It Cronarch? So if I want, I can grab um, Insurrection from my graveyard. 
Ricochet Trap gets tutored from uh, the uh, Sliver Queen player. And, um, you know, getting Identity Crisis doesn't really hurt the Melek player because he does have Otherworld Atlas to draw, like, three cards and stuff. Melek comes out. And then he starts using draw effects and ponders and stuff. Wait, stop. Stop, stop, stop. Hypersonic Dragons, a nice little is it card. And then Sliver Queen starts making little sliver babies. I do have Breath of Dargaz if I really need to use it, but right now what I'm doing is I'm holding back. Oh yeah, so Inquisition of Kozilek targets me from the Sliver Queen player, and I was holding mana back so that I could Oblation something, specifically Sliver Queen. But he uses his Rune Flare trap, and he puts the Oblation and gets rid of my fog bank, I believe. Yeah. So then I draw two cards. And then he ends up uh, attacking and killing the Melek player, who's only at 12 and only has one blocker. And because of the crescendo of war, everybody gets like plus 11, plus 11 or something. So I'm like, sweet, I've got reins of power. I might as well try and uh, kill him right now. Uh, so, because if I get reins of power, um, but I wasn't really thinking it through. And if, if he didn't have a counter spell, which he does, he could have sacked the Kasali Pride Mage to get rid of crescendo of war. Um... But he does have Dispel. And then I Austere Command specifically to get rid of Crescendo of War. But then also to get rid of Sliver Queen. It's not really going to slow him down a ton. He's going to pump out a bunch of Sliver Babies. But I just don't want Crescendo of War out there. Uh, it served its purpose, essentially. So yeah, there's a few more slivers. And then I play Wall of Omens. And I discard a few lands and some other stuff. Teferi comes out. And then Enlightened Tutor. He Enlightened Tutors from Maelstrom Nexus. That's just value for him. So. I mean, I can't blame him for doing that. He's got eight cards in hand, too. I get rid of the Dreamstone Headroom because I'm never really going to be able to cast it and use it in the same turn. There's the Maelstrom Nexus. And then nothing. I do have Scattering Stroke, which is a nice little counter spell if I need to use it. I have Flame Tongue Kavu to get rid of Teferi. And then he casts Sliver Queen and Cascades into Cultivate. It's not the craziest Cascade, but it works. So at this point, I'm like, fine, you know what? I'm just going to go and use my Kronarch to go get Insurrection. And if he doesn't have an answer next turn, hopefully I'll be able to kill him soon. I put um, Greaves on my Guild Mage because she's going to have the most value in the long time. And then I put Vow of Duty on the Sliver Queen because uh, if all I have to do is take one hit from the Sliver Queen and... I die because I've already taken 15 commander damage. Uh, I did not leave enough mana up to Scattering Stroke anything, so I'm hoping that whatever he does right now uh, isn't going to be enough to kill me. He plays a Soul Ring, he cascades into nothing. But it does, and then he ponders. Uh, 
the Cascade gives us an opportunity to take a look at his deck here. And his deck isn't bad. Um, oh, that's not what I want to do. But it's got like... Consecrated Sphinx, and then Phantasmal Image, uh, Defense Grid, Stranglehold, Jace the Mind Sculptor, Ulamog, Reanimate, Hallowed Burial, Oblivion Stone, Nevermore, Boil, which is some nice anti-blue stuff, Runescar Demon, Terminus, Karn Liberated, Leyline of Life Force is interesting. Um, I don't think I would have expected that. And then Insist is the same way. Uh, Mind Twist, which is uh, only my buddy Neo ever plays Mind Twist, so... Um, yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff in there. He ponders and then passes the turn. At this point, I bring Numod out and um, play Lightning Greaves and I attack. And basically what I'm trying to do, he's got eight cards in hand. And I was hoping to kind of draw out a counter spell or something, um, but he doesn't counter anything. I use Numon's ability to kill the Reliquary Tower and Temple of the False God. Uh, but what he does is... Uh, summoning Trap. And then Cascade. So he Cascades into Phantasmal Image. However, he did note that he wasn't able to cast it. Um, and so he wasn't able to copy anything, and he didn't. It was a bug with MTGO, I assume. And then he twin casts the summoning trap. And I was like, ooh, should I counter one of them? I'm not sure. No, I decide not to. Uh, and then, so the, sec the second one here uh, gets Runescar Demon. And I'm like, crap, well, he's going to be able to tutor for something, but... Might as well just sit back and wait and counter the tutor, or the card that he tutors for. Um, he was complaining that his hand was all land. Uh, he might not have even done it yet, but you'll probably see him in the box. And so I'm like, oh, did you get some draw? No, he didn't go for draw. What he went for was, uh, and he whiffs on the second summoning trap. Come on, don't, don't crap out on me. There we go. He ends up tutoring for mind twist. <laughs> he probably just, you know, and that's actually a good card to tutor for because... He gets extra value out of all of his cards to, uh, just by having Maelstrom Nexus out there. Luckily, however, I do keep up enough mana, and I do have the counter spell. <clears throat> he plays Maze of Ith, which is going to slow me down a little bit. And then he mind twists me for my hand. Or he tries to, at least. There it is. He cascades into Demonic Tutor, so that's a little frustrating, but nothing I can do about that. I do Scattering Stroke, the Mind Twist, but I lose the Cascade, or I'm sorry, the, um, whatever that is. Wait, stop. Um, whatever the coin flippy thing is. Uh, so, and then what he does is he sacrifices Kasali Pride Mage to get rid of the Vow of Duty. And at this point, I'm like, well, I've got enough mana. Yeah, he gets rid of the Vow. Might as well try and um, Insurrection and just end the game now, because he's at 20 life. And even if I can't Insurrection, I can play Propaganda or something like that. There's the Insurrection, and it resolves. So then I'm worried. I'm like, oh my gosh, you got Evacuation or something? N nope. 
He's got nothing. He does try to maze if uh, the Sliver Queen, but I use Azorius Guild Mage to counter the activated ability. There it is. And then that's game. So turn 14. I managed to win the game. This is the only game I won with the Zedru deck. It was the only game I was competitive in with the Zedru deck. Um, so I hope you enjoyed it.